This is a quick demonstration to refresh your skills on using the table tool to format documents. Uh, the way that I'm going to use it in this demo, the way we used it in class, is to create a heading, uh, I'm sorry, a caption for a case. And But you can use it anywhere in the document where you want to set up uh, invisible lines to hold columns or information in place and not have that move as you change formatting around it or even change the size of the formatting within it. It's much more stable than uh, setting tabs. So let's go ahead and begin. And uh, just so you know, I'm going to do a lot of the typing off screen, but we'll at least give you an indication of what I'm going to type. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and click into my document. I'm going to select center and then I'm going to type the court where this case appears. Once I've typed the name of the court, I'm going to enter two returns. I'm going to reselect left align rather than center align. I'm going to click on the insert ribbon, go straight down to the table tool, and I'm going to insert a table that is three wide and eight long. And then in order to have the nine columns I need, I'm going to go ahead and click to add another, I'm sorry, nine rows that I need. I'm going to click to add another row. And uh, as you may recall, we're going to split a couple of rows as we go in order to make everything fit appropriately. So the next thing I need to do is to resize my um, uh, columns so that they fit the document that I want. I'm going to have the case names appear right at the one inch margin. I'm going to split rows so that the plaintiff is going to appear at the two inch mark. So I need to move this uh, divider for my columns over to the three and a half inch mark because that's where I'm going to put in the list of the the kind of dividers going up and down. And then I'm going to drag uh, the next column in a little bit so that the case name and case number appears at the four inch tab mark. All right, so now I'm ready to uh, begin. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and enter the plaintiff's name, which in this case is Luke Skywalker. Oop, needs to be capital letters. That's another reason why people don't want to see me type. going to skip down a line and here's where I'll give the demonstration of splitting the row. Um, you'll remember that I right click into the row. I come down to split cells. I'm going to have it be two columns where it's now one column still staying one row. You can of course select whatever option works best for the formatting that you're doing. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag this to the two inch mark and then click in behind it. Take off cap lock and type plaintiff. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, fill out the rest of the table because from this point it's pretty much just uh, mechanical. All right, you see I've entered the V on the fifth line. I've entered Darth Vader all in caps with a comma after it on the seventh line. I've split the ninth cell and added defendant and then to finish it up all I have to do is uh, put in my parenthetical and the way just tabbing down using my arrow keys to put them all in place and then to finish up I come back to the fifth line and all I have to do is type in my case number and I click outside of uh, my table put a space in go back to center add the title of this particular pleading which is a complaint so I'm going to bold it, I'm going to underline it, got my cap lock on and I type complaint, hit a couple returns, take off the formatting, left return and now I'm ready to enter my complaint. Last thing I need to do to get this uh, caption ready to share is click on the caption, select it, go to the border control either here or on the ribbon, select no border, and then if I actually want to see, well actually you can, it still has highlighted to show us where the grid lines, although it won't show when I go to File, uh, Print, Preview, you'll see that none of the lines show up. Thanks for watching this short tutorial.